Like all, this video is divided into three parts. First, I'll cover the three defensive structures, the ballista, shocking tower, and executor. Second, I'll compare the three different power generation buildings and the quarry versus its advanced counterpart. And the third section will cover housing. Let's take a look at the ballista first. It costs about as much as two soldiers, so it's relatively cheap. Against a swarm of weenies, it's about as cost effective as soldiers. If you've got 700 gold and trying to decide between one or the other, the soldiers are mobile and recuperate their hit points, but the ballista remains 100% effective while taking up to twice the total damage, and has a knockback effect, which can substantially reduce the damage that bigger and scarier infected bring. A ballista will also kill every infected, except for chubbies and giants, in a single shot. It's difficult to rate ballistas using a spreadsheet since their knockback is so hard to compensate for. They might not kill faster and more effectively, but they will help your defenses stay up longer. The Executor is an upgraded ballista. It costs 2.7 times as much. It does a bit less damage against each target, which means that executives and all special infected won't be killed in one blow. However, it fires four times as fast and its splash damage can affect up to four times as many units as, this, as the ballista splash. Gold for gold, it's no more efficient than a ballista at taking out chubbies. They are trying to break through. The shocking tower is an unusual defense. It has a huge area of effect, but many players build defenses as a straight line, which seriously degrades a shocker's effectiveness. It also tends to get trashed by venoms which can sit safely outside the Shocker's range and take it down without any threat. Shocking Towers are only effective if you can make great use of their area of effect, that is, beyond 7 tiles into something like 10 or 15. Also note that there's currently a bug with Harpies, who can evade the tower's attack for an absurdly long time. I feel like I should be playing the Benny Hill music here. Next I'm going to look at buildings, but I want to make a quick note first. Uh, workers are provided by tents, and tents come with a positive income. Just having a worker available means more gold each tick. Should a building that requires more workers be considered cheaper because of the tax collected from the tents that you have to build those workers? For my math here, I'm saying no. Workers have an upfront cost, but I'm considering their tax revenue from workers to be separate from the cost of recruiting that worker. Now let's take a look at power sources. You've got three options, the mill, the advanced mill, and the power plant. It's easy enough to look at the numbers and realize that the advanced mill is not more cost efficient than the normal mill. It will give you more energy per building, but dollar for dollar is far worse, just under twice as expensive per unit of energy produced. The only reason to build an advanced mill is because you're out of room, or if you don't want to put energy production out where infected can get to it. Remember that if your net energy production drops below zero for any reason, every single one of your ballistas, executors, and shocking towers will shut down. Okay, with that said, don't build advanced mills, which means you can save a bit of cash and not research them either. Alright, so what about power plants? They're about 14% more efficient than mills. They're worth building, but beware of their wood consumption, which can be an issue on a frozen waste map where wood is sparse. In order to use power plants efficiently, you need to be aggressive about taking territory and placing sawmills. Quarries and advanced quarries have the same relationship as mills and advanced mills. The advanced version is more than twice as expensive per unit produced. But here, stone and iron are much more rare than open space. Yes, it's cheaper to build a new quarry on a new stone patch somewhere else, but finding and securing that patch can be trouble. Hence, deciding whether to build an advanced quarry or not is really a question of whether you've got a stupendous resource patch or if you've had trouble finding and securing more patches. The final buildings to look at are housing, the tent, cottage, and stone house. Before I get there, I want to mention that I'll be covering the math behind these calculations in another video, and I'll be covering wonders separately. If you're interested in either topic or in city building games in general, Hit that subscribe button, it'll be your best way to find the videos later. Here's a peek at what I'll cover next. Yeah, yeah, it looks like crazy math, but you don't need a math degree. It all breaks down to the simple statements that I've made in this video. 
Now on to housing. It costs more upfront to upgrade a tent than to build a new one, and to upgrade a cottage than to build a new one. But in both cases, the upgrade produces more gold per tick. If you're really close to the end game, note that it takes about four and a half days for a tent to pay off. Upgrading a tent versus building a new one takes 12 game days to pay off, and upgrading a cottage versus building two tents takes 11 days to pay off. And that's a, all of these are a really long time. Luckily, having a bank nearby improves the gain from the upgrades by a good bit and reduces the time it takes for the initial investment to pay off. With a bank, tanks only take three and a half days to pay off. The tent upgrade to cottage only takes eight days, down from 12, and the cottage upgrade to a stone house takes seven and a half days, down from 11. My conclusion here is that you should do your upgrades as soon as possible because if you're growing fast and playing well, your biggest hurdle will be food, and cottages and houses make much better use of food than tents do. And of course, you'll take that food, put it in tents, get workers, convert them to troops, and go out and slay infected bugs. See you next time.